Today we are in Kyoto, one of the most popular cities here in Japan. We'll be visiting some of the top rated spots so you know the best things to see, eat and do. Along the way we'll share some of the top tips and tricks. So you can miss crowds like this. So without further ado, let's show you the ultimate guide to Kyoto. So to start our day off, we bought a one-day pass for bus and subway because we're jam-packing all the activities in one day. So we paid 1,100 and we got this from Family Mart, actually. Look, it's quite cool. But anyway, let's go to our first activity. Let's go. And that leads us to our first stop in Kyoto, which you won't want to miss. We have arrived at the Gion district. Here you'll find traditional Japanese filled streets with countless things to do, from temples to street food, and of course, some shopping for souvenirs. So right behind me is the Tower of Yasaka, also known as the Hokanji Temple. It is also the oldest pagoda here in Kyoto. And guys, this is the most photogenic spot here in Kyoto. I'm not surprised, just look how beautiful that is. Like this street as well, wow. Whilst you're here, make sure to check out the world's first traditional Japanese Starbucks here in Gion district and it's got tatami seatings on the inside. You will enter through the Nyoman gate and in between the gate and the temple you will also see the three-story pagoda and there is also a viewpoint where you can see the whole of Kyoto. Let's go and see it! Let's go! Wow look at that Za! It's just as beautiful as the first time we saw it. So there's this almost like viewing deck and you can literally see the entire city. You can also see Kyoto Tower, as well as the whole of Gion. It's very busy today, so I'm seeing everyone walking up. Oh, beautiful, honestly. So here in Kyoto, it is not unusual to see people dress in the traditional Japanese kimono and yukata, but especially here in the Gion district. You'll see people everywhere wearing them, taking photos in them, and you can rent them all around this area. I think they're around 3,000 yen for a full day, and that includes the entire outfit. So yeah, don't be surprised to be seeing tourists as well as locals dressed in the traditional Japanese clothing whilst here. And if you want to as well, why not? Give it a go. Okay, so the main area, which is the pagoda and the gate, it is completely free. However, if you want to enter the main attraction, which is the Kiyomizu Dera Temple, you have to pay an admission fee of 400 yen. This place is very interesting because it's been built without a single screw or nail, which is mental. It is also one of the World Heritage Site here in Japan. However, there are two times of year where attractions like this will be more busy because they are popular seasons to come, and that is cherry blossom season and autumn. And it is currently autumn, which might explain why the crowds are a lot right now. So if you want a better chance of seeing places more untouched with less people, make sure to come out of those seasons. But if you want to see pretty leaves, then definitely come in, those, in that season. Okay, so we have arrived here at Fushimi Inari Shrine. And be prepared for a lot of crowds. When you come out of the station, you'll be greeted straight away by this huge Tori gate. It's huge, but anyway guys, let's go in. Oh my God. 
This is an iconic spot here in Kyoto, home to 10,000 Tori gates, giving the illusion of an endless tunnel. So this place gets very busy, so make sure to check it out very early in the morning to avoid big crowds, so you can enjoy it for yourself. Just look how beautiful that is. Guys, just look how busy it is. So on the way back down guys, it is considerably less busy as people have spread out along the walk. So if you wanted to hike all the way to the summit and back, it will take you two to three hours, mm. but you can freely walk around for as long or as little as you like. So today we decided to just do a short walk around just to get a feel for the place because it is far, far too busy to get around. It's literally taking twice the amount of time to get anywhere because you're just stuck behind queues and queues of people. So definitely come early and you're always around in no time. And luckily we got to see it last year without all the crowds. So yeah, really, really good. But this is definitely worth checking out. But anyway, on to the next spot. Let's go. And if you fancy it, have a snack on the side street right next to the shrine. Let's give this a go. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so if you didn't know, I have a slight obsession here in Japan with these fish things. It's called taiyaki or takiyaki. I call it takiyaki, but I think it's called taiyaki. But yeah, I have a slight obsession with these. So I've got my first ever fresh one. This one's warm. I normally just get them at the convenience stores. So. Mm. She's good. So Kyoto is home to some of the finest matcha and green tea here in Japan. So we have come to the matcha house to try their famous tiramisu. So we've gone for a roasted green tea tiramisu as well as a matcha tiramisu. And then we've got a matcha latte with brown sugar and cream. All of it looks really, really good. <gasps> Look at the way it breaks. It's so mm -hmm. good, it's refreshing. That is the perfect balance of sweetness and bitterness. Wow. The cream is so, so sweet. Mm. It's so soft and smooth. And then you get a tiny hint of matcha at the end, which provides a small bitterness, but it's not overpowering. I don't normally like matcha, but this is perfect. So this is the roasted green tea. <laughs> <laughs> I breathed in the tea. <laughs> mm. the aesthetic is amazing. It's really good. The cream is really, really good. It's more on the expensive side. But I'd say this one, it's not too bitter. It's a must try. This one's a must try. Mm. Really, really good. Right. So I've got my brown sugar matcha latte. Look how pretty that looks. Look at that, and then a little bit of matcha. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> it's so good. All right, let's try the actual latte. Moment of truth. Oh, I normally don't like matcha lattes, but this one, it's not strong and bitter. It's just perfect. It just goes down straight to your throat. Wow, that's so nice. What the heck? And then the cream as well. Oh. All right, let's try the tiramisu. Just look how creamy that looks. Just look at that. Taste test. Mm. You also get that chiffon cake in the middle. We got a chef over here. Very nice. <laughs> and look at that matcha there as well. Really can't taste the matcha, it's not bitter. So creamy. So here's the menu and prices for reference. So head over to Nishiki Market for endless 
street food restaurants as well as a shopping district here in Kyoto. And whilst you're here, make sure to check out Nishiki Timangu Shrine, which is right here and it looks so pretty right in the center of Nishiki Market. But anyway, let's go and check it out. It's really crazy how just a few steps away is the really crazy, chaotic, hectic Nishiki market. And then you come in here and you're in this calm, peaceful, almost like serenity, right? It's such a contrast and it's just so, so nice. Definitely come and check this out. So this is a perfect way to have a little look and insight into the culture. And it's really beautiful as well, guys. Like it, the architecture of everything here in Japan is just stunning. From the lanterns to the Tori gates, you won't be disappointed. So we've overheard that apparently the markets here and all the shops here in the Shiki market put their offering and put their name on the lanterns just to show of good luck. If you're feeling hungry here in Kyoto, check out this highly recommended place. It's called Salad Stop. So we have got the lunch set, which is set A that we have got. So it's basically a mountain of salad with omelette and scallops with chicken cutlet. And then you can also get rice or bread. I can't wait, it smells amazing. Let's dig in. Alright guys, so we have come to round one to have fun, which is a huge arcade place here in Kyoto. Oh my god, the vibe here is completely different. The next morning. So if you want, you can take a side trip to Nara from Kyoto. It only takes 40 minutes by train. Not only is it famous for their mochi, but they are also famous for their deers at Nara Park. Now we were here a year ago and this was a really, really good activity. Mm. There was hundreds of deers, about 50 people only. We were feeding the deers. To be honest, they were a little bit aggressive yes. how much they wanted these biscuits. Um, however, this year, this time around, is a completely different experience. We can see hardly any deers. The deers do not want feeding. We haven't bought any biscuits. You can buy biscuits for 200 yen. Uh, but the kids that are trying to feed the deers, they are not interested at all. And I think maybe it's because they're being fed all, all day long. Maybe they're not hungry. And I also think because there are so many people here that they are spreading out more to where all the people are. Yeah. Or trying to maybe even hide from all the people. There is a really young deer that is running around like really frightened at the moment, yeah. right? So, I mean, it's definitely worth coming to check out if you've never seen it before. Maybe come early in the morning to get a completely different experience. But I think you just need to weigh up whether like you'll get the experience that you may have seen on Instagram or not. Because like I said, we had a completely different experience last time to this time. So you've just got to factor that in and decide if you want to make the trip here or not. Because it does cost quite a bit. I it think does. it cost about seven to 900 yen to get here. And that included the bus from our accommodation to the train station and then the train. And then of course it will cost the same going back. Oh yeah, my God. okay. Like... What else did you do? <laughs> Are you cold? <laughs> oh. 
All right, guys, so if you want the best mochi, come to Nara. I can't remember the name, but I'm gonna put it right here. But anyway, they make the mochi right in front of you. They hit the mochi with a big hammer so quick, and they're like, ha, 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 yeah, hi, 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 like that. And then you get this beautiful mochi right here. Wow. And it's still warm. It costs 180 yen. And I think there's a red bean paste right in the middle. But anyway, let's give this a go. Mm. That's the red bean paste there. It's quite sweet. The mochi is so nice. I think this is the best mochi I've ever had. Mm. So good. It's not sweet, but it's not bitter. It's like perfectly in the middle. The red bean paste is nice. Didn't think I'd like that. Mm. Oh, good. Guys, the way they do it is so cool. However, it's also funny because <laughs> it's so quick and the sound they make, it's like, hey, 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 hey. I don't know how they don't hit the hand, but make sure when you do come here, the line is going to be pretty long. So straight away after they're done making it, you can literally join the line and get your one mochi, which is 180 yen. But you can also get a box, but it's on a separate line. And the one that you are buying is fresh. That's literally the one that they've just made. It's mental, so nice. To end off your trip, we suggest heading for an exhilarating bowl of fire yeah, ramen. Oh, so nice. This place is called Membaka Fire Ramen. It will set you back 2,000 yen, but it's 100% worth it. This is our second time visiting, so if that doesn't tell you how good it is, I don't know what will. It's an experience that will leave your heart racing, but the ramen is so delicious and the owner is so lovely, you're bound to remember this for a lifetime. We stayed at an Airbnb and it cost us £46 per person for two nights and the lovely owner picked us up as well as dropping us off to the station. It's very spacious and it has everything. Hopefully you found this video useful and will help you with your upcoming Japan trip. So make sure to like, share and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.